guys and welcome to the next video of this project. Sorry it's taken a bit longer than uh, originally planned to get this video out but we're finally there. Uh, so here I'm just marking out and drilling the front tube plate for the longitudinal stays. It's got a doubling plate there so it's two pieces of steel to drill through. That's why I have to keep taking the insert out of the rear approach to clear it. Next I had to get it mounted up in the boring machine because I didn't have a lathe big enough. The, um, I had to skim about a millimetre off the outside to get it to fit. But this worked quite well. As you can see I had to make a frame that to go on the front of the barrel to actually press the tube plate in because it you need a good tight fit and this was quite um, took quite an effort to get it to go all the way in. After that I had to make a rotator up to um, enable me to rotate the boiler, uh, almost like a rotisserie. A couple of pieces of plate we had to make to make up the uh, assembly front and back so there's a front carriage that I had to make as well but it did work quite well as you can see we can just turn the uh, whole boiler on the gantry so that was access all the way around the barrel when we're drilling as you can see we can just rotate the barrel drill the next hole in the, through the barrel and the tube plate so these will be where the rivets will eventually be going. And after that I had to come out and then I deburred all the holes, checked everything, took any burrs out, any bits of metal and then put it back in again. So here we see all the bolts being fitted, it'll hold it in place while we're riveting. gap in one corner so I just warmed the edge of the plate up which then brought it to meet the barrel. And we started trimming rivets. Got to boil the angle grinder so use a lathe. This is a rivet squeezer. And the rivets are being warmed up. Day that was riveting all those up. Thanks to Chris and his wife for giving me a hand. Here he is just corking the edges of the plate together. So this is the compensating ring that goes between the um, well the end of the barrel and where the smoke box joins onto the barrel. It needed to be turned also because I bought it oversized. And here we are on the machine on the boiler again, just skimming the outside and the inside. 
inside. Then it was removed and we just cut the front inch or so off where the barrel's a bit long. Took a minute or two to cut that off, 12mm thick. There it is in the ring on, fitted. The engine did have a canopy originally and I found one for sale online and I'm lucky this one's in really good condition so um, we've packed it away in a dry store for now so once the engine's finished um, we'll, uh, we'll put this canopy on. So this is the front door of the smoke box just being trimmed up on the CNC mill. Um, get a good fit, nice the edge on it. The uh, door ring fitted, the uh, hinge bracket's being drilled here. So these are the slide bars um, being machined up and used in the ground stock uh, gauge plate for this. It's quite a bit of work involved in making these, putting all the oil ways in, but they come out quite nice. And of course you haven't got to ground them because they're already ground stock and they're hardened. These are just the oilers that go on these slide bars. Did a bit of aqua blasting and polished them up, they look quite nice. So these are the new bronze slides that Crosshead fitted to. I did a lot of work in these. I think it took me a day to make all these. And this is just a trial fitting of the uh, slide bars. And there's a crossover with them all fitted. So this is what the pistons go into. And the Conrod joins. This is before we drilled the block, so we were just doing a trial fitting of everything just to see where the block was. And when I was sort of happy, I uh, marked the block out, start drilling holes in the barrel. Put the boiler back up right, we uh, marked out the chimney base and drilled bits of pedal rivets. So the block went back on again. So this is the front perch bracket, it had a bit of damage at some point in its life, so um, I thought I'd try and MIG it up and the MIG did seem to stick the cast quite well, so I um, did an okay job of that. Upside down, mark the holes out, drill them the same way as everything else with a mag drill. Decided to needle down the block instead of having the sandblast and getting grit everywhere. There's quite a lot of crud and oil everywhere growing in. A bit of paint going on. And this is the gasket that goes under the block between the barrel. So we can bore stainless gasket this one, graphite. About 
three mil thick. Makes up for any uh, deviations between the block and the barrel when there was one or two. Just making the steam chest hole a little bit bigger. This is where the steam enters the cylinder block. ready to go on. Started fitting carrot bolts. So these are to go in from underneath. I've welded them to a piece of bar and threaded them through. So it's just a tapered end on a bolt which seals it into the hole. As you can see it's a bit fiddly because it's such a long way in but did the job. Be torquing them all down gradually bringing the barrel up to the block. It's got a tapered barrel on it and the block's been machine parallel so we had a little bit of a gap in some places but it did meet quite well. Sound blasting going on. This is the uh, front door ring being machined. The um, original one was a bit cracked, so decided to make a new one on one of the laves. Here we collected the wheels prior to fitting. Right, since the last video we've been uh, quite busy on the engine. Um, we never touched on any of the wheels with the running gear in the last video because it's all been on pallets packed away, but we've um, had the front wheels profiled on the rubbers. Um, uh, it did have, it has had new T-rings, so they were riveted to the, to the original spokes and hubs. Um, everything's been assembled here, ready for a bit of paint prep and some uh, primer. And we'll um, get this fitted to the uh, front of the engine in due course. Yeah, it's coming on nicely. So as you can see, we've got the block bolted onto the barrel. Um, quite a few uh, nights here trying to work the alignment out. So the crank had to be perfectly square with the block and in line and in the right position. As it's only a single cylinder, we've got one con rod in one position on the crank web. So this block had to be within a margin of error, um, but it needed to be as good as we can get it. So a friend of mine came and helped me just to double check on my measurements. And once we were happy, we took the block then off again, drilled all the holes, put the carrot bolts in, torqued it down, checked the alignment again, and then continued torquing it down. So all these are all now tight. The block is where it's going to be for the rest of its life anyway. Um, so we are progressing quite nicely. The, uh, as you see the smoke box is on, chimney base is all drilled, got the perch bracket drilled, uh, that's waiting for um, top coat of paint. The uh, door is nearly finished. Um, yeah, we're getting on with the boiler side of things now. The tubes will be going in next, that'll be in the next video. Um, but we're trying to get it on its wheels for a, a showdown in Cornwall in the next few weeks. Um, so we're, we're really pressing on some late nights trying to get it movable again because it's still quite a lump at the minute. It's about four tons, I would have thought, so it's going to be quite a lump to move around. Um, and then after the show, we'll be coming back in here and that'll be, it won't be out again then until it's uh, finished, finished. Um, which is still going to be quite a way off. Here we see it at the West of England Steam Engine Society Rally. Um, we managed to get it down there in time and we've uh, put up a bit of, dis of a display with the old working photos and a bit of the build sheet and history. Um, you just see the plaque on the front, it did actually go to a few of these rallies um, in the 50s and 60s and the organisers were um, very uh, pleased to see it actually turn up because a lot of people haven't seen this engine in this state for many, many years. So it's nice to get it back down there. All right, so here we are back in the shed. Um, 
I said it won't be coming out here now until it's finished, but as you can see, it's a little bit taller than what it was before we put the front perch bracket on and the wheels. It does stand quite high. I mean, I'm six foot. It's getting on a bit now um, and increasing in weight all the time, but hopefully in the next video we should have a bit more motion on, start taking it apart again. We did have the covers on for the show just to make it look a bit nicer, but um, a lot of it's coming off again. So in the next video I'll touch on pistons, crank, bearings, line boring, that sort of thing. So um, hopefully see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.